commit a barbaric massacre that kills 25 citizens in a booby-trapped car blast in Hama Street in As-Salamiyye. The former commander-in-chief of the Russian Air Forces says the deployment of Patriot batteries near Syrian-Turkish borders is an act directed against Russia. Seventeen people are killed and 50 others wounded in three terrorist explosions in Baghdad. Good afternoon and welcome to our news for today. A suicide bomber yesterday detonated a booby-trapped car full of explosives in Hamas Street in the center of as killing and injuring several citizens. The terrorist blast claimed the five of 25 people and wounded others, including women and children, some of whom are in a serious condition. Huge material damage was inflicted on the place, particularly as National Hospital, thus obstructing the rescue operation of the wounded. The Forum for Syria, along with members of the Syrian community in Hungary, condemned the terrorist attack which targeted a Salamiya town. Members of the Forum stressed that the terrorist attack reveals the barbaric nature of the terrorists and their unmistakable affiliation with foreign agendas which seek to destroy Syria's stability. A unit of the Syrian Arab Army, in cooperation with the guards of the gas station in Mount Ashair, has faced a terrorist group on the road to Palmyra that was trying to attack the station. The clashes resulted in the killing and injuring of a number of terrorists. Another army unit destroyed five vehicles southeast of Palmyra, killing the terrorists there. Our armed forces also pursued a number of terrorists in Ibel, al haidariye al buwaida and um Sakhar in Homs countryside, killing and injuring many of them and destroying their equipment. Head of the International Relations Committee at the Russian Federal Council, Mr. Mikhail Markilov, has reiterated Russia's stand that calls for negotiations between the Syrian government and the opposition without foreign intervention, while the USA and the West insist on their call for changing the regime, adding that this keeps the, the differences between Moscow and Washington over the Syrian crisis. Margilov pointed out that the deterioration of the crisis would undermine stability not only in Syria, but in a region that extends from Morocco till Iran, as well as to the Russian and Chinese borders. On his part, former commander-in-chief of the Russian Air Forces, Anatoly Korunkov, has warned that the deployment of Patriot missiles near Syrian-Turkish borders is an act that is directed against the Commonwealth of Independent States as well as the member countries of the Collective Security Treaty Organization. This means, he added, that it is directed in the first place against Russia more than against Syria because the borders are near and Azerbaijan is Turkey's ally. Therefore, they can shell Armenia easily and with extreme precision if they install the missiles on neighboring mountains. On the other side, members of the Turkish Communist Party demonstrated in Iskandarun port protesting the arrival of Patriot missiles at the port, expressing rejection of deploying these missile batteries on the Turkish territory. Members of the Turkish Communist Party protested in front of the port entrance to prevent the vehicles from going outside. Then they were able to enter the port despite attempts by the Turkish police to stop them. Protesters shouted slogans denouncing the NATO and the deployment of missiles and also against U.S. President Barack Obama and Turkish Prime Minister Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Spokesman for the Central Committee of the Turkish Communist Party, Erkan Baj, addressed the protesters saying that the Turkish Council of the Nation didn't discuss the decision to deploy Patriot missiles or foreign forces on the Turkish land, pointing out that the Turkish people will not be a partner in implementing this decision and will prevent the occupation forces from entering his country. Mr. Bash added that the sultans of the Ottoman Empire allowed their country to be occupied by bringing foreign forces where the Turkish people were against this occupation, referring to the decision by the ruling government of the Justice and Development Party to open the gate in front of NATO.
In Iraq, 17 people were killed and more than 55 others wounded following a car explosion which targeted a military checkpoint in Diyala province south of Baghdad. Meanwhile, two Iraqis were killed and five others wounded when a series of terrorist attacks targeted the city of Diyala this morning. In Egypt, the National Salvation Front called for massive demonstrations at the Tahrir Square next Friday to realize what it called the interests of the people. The Front said in a statement that the demonstrators seek to prevent the Muslim Brotherhood from assuming full control of the state. The Front pointed out that the current Islamist political regime has committed deadly mistakes calling for forming a new constitution which fulfills the people's aspirations for justice and social equality. In occupied Palestine, Israeli occupation troops broke into a number of towns in the West Bank, arresting scores of Palestinians, including children. Occupation troops used tear gas and sound bombs against a number of residential neighborhoods and set up military barricades at several main entrances to block the movement of Palestinians inside their own villages and towns. The National Commission of the Syrian Science Olympiad honors the distinguished winners who will represent Syria in World Science Olympiads in the domains of mathematics, physics, chemistry and informatics. The National Commission of the Syrian Science Olympiad has concluded its final tests intended to determine the winners in the scientific competitions. The festivity was held at Al Assad Library where the results of the first 10 distinguished winners in maths, physics, chemistry and informatics were declared. The winners would be representing Syria in World Science Olympiads. The students who have excelled in the tests expressed their happiness over this honoring and voiced their hope to hoist Syria's flag in international competitions and get golden medals. The central final scientific tests of the Syrian Science Olympiad had kicked off at Damaroz Hotel in Damascus yesterday with the participation of 293 young men and women from all governorates. The Syrian Science Olympiad is a strategic national project that looks for distinguished students with a view of developing their skills in the various scientific specializations through competitions, training and rehabilitation. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more news about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam after a short break.